here and then share the screen. How do I do that? Make this bigger. Chat, share, and pause, share screen, there you go. Okay. All right, hi everyone. Hello, how is the lighting and sound? You can hear and see me, all okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I wish I could have been at the Japan Writers Conference in person this year, but I was not able to, but I'm very grateful that we have Zoom. Um, my name is Michael Frazier. I am a poet and high school teacher living in Kanazawa, Japan. Uh, here goes a picture of Kanazawa and Ishikawa. I think this is my third or fourth time at JWC. I've been going since 2018, I think. So yeah, I always love the community that everyone brings together. And yeah, I, uh, I've only listened briefly to some of the other presentations. Um, so I, I see that we're like live and there are some people here digitally, right? Like, are there other people on the Zoom call with me? How do I see this? I just need to know what I'm working with here. Who's in the room? Are all of these Zoom boxes people who are like participate? Oh, I see some thumbs up from Zoria. Hello. Okay, I see some thumbs up and then there's a bunch of people in the room. So normally I would ask you all like, what's your name and where are you from and stuff. But since we're working with a bunch of people, I guess the one thing I do really wanna know is why did you choose or come to this workshop? Besides the fact that like maybe it was the only one offered. Like if, is there anyone who has a particular interest in our topic? Oh, I guess I should explain what our topic is. So the topic for this workshop is, oh death, where is your sting, a poetics of hope? And I'll read the little blurb. Thumb through Twitter to turn on the news and is inevitable to see a post or broadcast about someone dying by a virus, a natural disaster, an inhumane government, or a twisted mind with a weapon. This workshop is focused on death and mitigating the fear that death produces with the hope that is, that is innate in every soul. This is a generative workshop, so we're gonna write. For those interested in writing about and through the reality of living in a world that is daily posed against our lives. We will read poems anticipating about and responding to death. Some poets include Denise Smith, Safi Alhilo, Mikio De Laura Co, Alyssa Nicole Harris, Shuntaro Tanikawa, and others. We will read anti-eulogies, sento prayers, ghazals, and other poems that confront the inevitable. We will understand how they write around and through the concept of dying with particular interest in how hope is the hinge of their poetry. We will write our own poems that face our fears. So yeah, so we'll read some poems. We'll talk a little bit, explicate just a little bit. I kind of just wanted to get a bunch of these poems into the room and then we write, we'll write throughout this next hour. And so I'll, yeah, I'll ask my question again, like, is there anyone with a particular interest with writing about or responding to uh, death? And if so, why? If not, that's okay. I'm just, yeah, really just trying to read that cookie. <laughs> I was interested in the word hope more than the word death in, in, in the workshop title. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, I guess we'll just jump on in then. I shared a Google Doc in the chat that contains all the poems we'll be reading today. So for those on Zoom, you can look at that. And it's like a, it's like a working document, so I'll keep adding things to it. Um, I'm going to pull it up so everyone else can see it. I'm gonna start us off with just a small poem. Okay, maybe some of you know this poem already, but it's called, won't you celebrate with me by Lucille Clifton? Won't you celebrate with me what I've shaped into a kind of life? I had no model, born in Babylon, bo both non-white and woman. What did I see to be except myself? 
I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay. My one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. I wanna start us off with some pre-writing. And if you have paper and pen or a cell phone, please pull that out. And I want you to make a list of, um, I've, I wrote it more succinctly in the journal for a minute. Make a list. What are the things that if given the opportunity would kill you? What are your fears? And this is just gonna be private writing time. We're gonna write for a couple minutes. Um, I realize for some of us, we may come in the workshop with a very like, uh, depending on our background or our experiences with a very like uh, pointed response to this question. And for some of us, death is not a normal thing we reflect on. For those, if that's you in the workshop, it's fine to have a more lighter response to this question. It's like, it doesn't have to be super grave. So I just wanted to sage that worry. Okay, I'll set a timer and just free writing time. Let's go. Two more minutes and then we'll stop.
Okay, please begin to finish your last thought, idea, sentence. Now, can I ask, would anyone like to share anything from your list? You don't have to share all of it, just one thing. I'll, um, I'll share one from my list because uh, I, I, it's not actually a it, it can't actually kill me, but roaches. I just really don't like roaches. So, that, <laughs> so that's on my list. So that's my contribution. But does anyone else want to share what um, something you wrote on your list? And I'll write it down in the chat as well. Dementia. Dementia. Dementia, OK. In the chat, we have saying goodbye to my daughter. Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, too true. I think that, um, hmm. Life is a slow death. Mm. Death comes after life. Some people choose to put it in a poetic sense. Snaps of that. And another thing we have in the chat, a car when tired from overwork. I mistake where and when I cross the street. As a new driver, I really resonate with that. Being lost in an impenetrable jungle. Okay, well, thank you for sharing. Oh, natural disasters would might kill my family as well. Yeah, I wrote that down on my list as well. Earthquakes, tsunamis, murder hornets, the type of bee. the planet. Okay, let's move on. Oh, painkiller. You can keep typing in the chat, uh, but maybe for the people who are live, please don't like uh, type in the chat vocally. I'm gonna continue. So we'll next we'll look at some of the poems. I divided the poems today into two sections. But I think I'm going to make an executive decision to, given that we only we have less than 50 minutes kind of, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use my poems to guide the workshop opposed to bringing in a lot of external resources. So I'm going to read a poem called What Might Kill My Mother. It's a list poem. And then I'll read another poem by someone else. Then we'll write a little bit and then we'll look at some spoken word videos and then we'll write some more. I think that would be the given, yeah. The way I'd planned it was more like two, really two hour lecture. So I don't, I'm, I think it's best to do this, to do this route. So I'll read a poem and can I have a volunteer for the second poem? I like to get the volunteers beforehand so we don't fumble the ball. I can read. Who's, who's that? Who, who's, who spoke? Ruthie. Ruthie, are you live? No, I'm on Zoom. Are oh, you on Zoom? Okay. Alrighty. Well, the poem is in the. Here you go. It's the Shuntaro Tani Kawa poem. Or actually, I'll let you choose. You can choose the Shuntaro Tani Kawa poem or the Men Follow Me by Safia Hilo. So you you can have time to choose. I'll read a poem and then yeah, okay. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm gonna read the poem called What Might Kill My Mother. 
which is screen. So I write a lot about um, family and I've even done a workshop at JWC about family, I think two years ago. And so I usually, when I choose like workshops that I want to do, I, I choose the things that I feel are most urgent in my own writing. Cause I just feel like that's the most, that makes the most sense opposed to like a lecture that anyone can give doing the thing that I'm most obsessed with. And so I, I'm gonna read this poem. It's a list poem and it's just called What Might Kill My Mother. Yeah. Sunkiss orange soda, a spoon left in the sink overnight, sweat stains, country sweet chicken relocating across the street, fluorescent eyed deer during her AM commute, anatomy and physiology at community college, debt with no diploma to show, Rochester's lake affects snow. Black ice laid in the night, three doubles back to back, her nursing home residents spitting nigger girl running their sword fingers through her permed hair, her knees, ankles, sciatic nerve retiring before she does. Men who mistake good night for come over an empty nest closing in like a grave, a dealer's bullet engraved with her brother's name settling for her. The prophecy, you will save your family returning at 2 a.m. night after night. The women Women who blow up her phone, who make her everyone's mother, they bring their sons, ask, can you do it again? How you raise two black boys on your own. And I'll read the poet statement is kind of like my process with writing this. This poem started off as an exercise to deal with my anxiety regarding the inevitability of my mother's death. So that my anxiety wouldn't lord over me, I wrote a list of what could possibly kill her as a way to put my worries into perspective, a perspective, shrink them. I didn't intend for this to be a poem I would share publicly until my mother initiated a conversation about what to do if she were, if the other were to die, like if I were to die or she were to die. I felt uncomfortable discussing this as if talking about it would hasten the future. But by sharing her fear so honestly, she created space for me to also be honest and share my poem. When I finished reading, she went silent. I thought I had hurt her with the, you know, it's, it's kind of grim. Then she laughed and started to thank God as if I wasn't present anymore. She then said that hearing all the obstacles she survived reminded her how good he's been and how strong she has been throughout her life. What I thought was taboo and unshareable was regarded as encouragement and testimony. I was reminded to see God in all things, not just was easily palatable. And so I had us write like a list of what will kill us in the beginning, just to kind of get the fears into the room. We're going to revisit that writing exercise towards the end. But next, I want to hear another poem. We're just going to bombard us with these poems. So Ruthie, did you choose? Um, let me see. Did I choose? I don't, let's see. It's under the, so you can, I'm going to highlight it. Either Men Follow Me by Safi El Hilo or uh can I choose for you actually just because men follow me is similar to my poem so I'm, oh, okay you can choose okay can you please read goodbye by Shuntaro Tanikawa and this is a translation I don't know how reliable it is but I like the translation okay goodbye uh, okay can you enlarge it a little bit yes I can okay there we go okay Goodbye. Say goodbye to my liver, my kidneys, my pancreas. You've worked for me for so long, but now you're free. Now you can go wherever you want. My heart, my brain, my eyes, ears, mouth, and even my dick. Hmm. That said, the future is bright without you guys. I don't have any regrets about me. So don't hesitate to forget me. Melt into the mud. Let's disappear into the sky. Let's join those without words. My dear lover, it's time to say goodbye. It's time to part with my dear kidneys and spleen as well. I'm about to die but no one is beside me. 
So I will say goodbye to all of you. You've worked for me for quite a while. You're going to be free now. You may go wherever you wish. Once I part from you, I will always be free. I will be just my soul, naked. My dear heart, I caused you trouble and palpitations. My dear brain, I caused you to think of trivial matters. My dear eyes, ears, mouth, and penis, you worked hard for me. Don't all think ill of me. I was what I was thanks to you all. Having said that, my future without you is bright as I will feel free of myself. I will have no hesitation to lose myself, to dissolve into dirt, to disappear into the sky, to become part of those with no words. Thank you, Ruthie. I love your reading voice. It's so like, I felt like you wrote the poem yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a new poem, a recent poem I read. And uh, what I really love about it is the tone and how very frank Tanikawa is about, you know, the inevitable that it's, it's one day we will be divorced from this world. Um, and he kind of makes like a goodbye letter to his body. Um, and so one of our prompts later will be to, or actually let's take a little moment to like three minute free write. Um, the prompt is going to be, if you had to say goodbye to your body, what would you say to it? And this is just quick free writing just to keep the pen moving throughout the, the workshop.
30 more seconds, please wrap up that thought. Okay, please finish your last sentence. Okay, so we're gonna keep on going. Can I have another volunteer to read our next poem? I don't mind reading, but I, I also feel like I'm a high school teacher, so I always want to get the audience to participate. It's too small to read on the screen for us. Oh, I see. For the live folks, are y'all looking at like a small screen? Well, it's a big screen, but the type is still small, at least for me. Yes, everyone thinks it's too small to see you. It's possible. Since I'm saying this, maybe I should do it. It's possible to go over there and put like a little. But I think you can make it. All right. <laughs> I can read. I didn't know. I don't know what the setup is like when y'all's in. So that's oh, my bad. Oh, this this screen is also pretty small now that I mention it. Oh, wait a minute. screen. <laughs> You're the obituary writer? Yeah, so before you read, I just wanna talk about it really quickly. So, so the next poem comes from Victoria Chang's book, Obit. It was released maybe, was it two years ago? It's a collection of obituaries and they're really small, they look like this. But she makes all these obituary for things that die. For example, friendships died. Uh, secrets died, chairs died, ambition died, friendships died. And of course, there's an actual narrative in the book of her father getting, um, what is it, getting dementia and dying. And her mother also, like her mother's response to it. I hope I didn't butcher the summary of that. But anyway, the, there's so many point obituaries in this book. And so I wanna read this one, then we'll talk about it. Okay, so this one is called The Obituary Writer. Okay, so the obituary writer can die before the subject. John Wilson died in 2002 before the publication of his obituary on band leader Artie Shaw, who died in 2004. What if I die before my father? I've written his obituary in my head every day since his stroke. My father's brain has died before him. It was surrounded by his beloved skull. What if the hinges on his skull break and the brain falls out? Do I give it back or toss it? What if we call the waiter over and God comes instead? Do we offer him a seat and a brandy or do we cover our eyes and hope he doesn't see us? My mother spent years knowing she would die, but in her last days, she had no idea. To suffer for so long with knowledge, but not to finish what, sorry, to suffer for so long with knowledge, but not to finish what was known. Why do I need her to know in her, sorry, I'm totally bungling. Why do I need her to know in her last moments? Like the people who died in the Oakland warehouse fire, crawling on the floor, trying to sort between a battered organ and a door, between a staircase and a shadow. Death isn't the enemy. Knowledge of death is the enemy. You better preach. Yeah, I um, thank, thank you for reading. So the, it's a really great book. I really recommend it. It's just Tonka's obituaries. 
And they all kind of have this very wordplay, focusing on things dying, but also this abstract, like the nature of dying and death itself. And I was really moved by the last line. Knowledge of death is, the, death isn't the enemy. Knowledge of death is the enemy. So our next little like brainstorming activity is just write down what your fears are. This is just a list. What are your fears? Death aside, it could be related to death, but just what are your fears? This is gonna be a shorter writing time. So just jot down as soon as it comes to you. Just one more minute, so please finish up your fears. Okay, please start to finish your last sentence and then we're gonna watch two videos. So I don't know the demographic of the room. I don't know, maybe by a show of hands, who do we have, who are the poets in the room? Like, do we have people who write poems on the regular? I should have asked that at the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. And then, Everyone else, I'm assuming you're somewhere on the nonfiction or fiction spectrum. Mm -hmm. I see some head nods. Yeah, I see some hands and head nods. Okay, great, great, great. Now that that matters, I feel like anyone genres are just, you know, aligned in the sand, basically. Um, so next we're gonna watch two spoken word videos. And so I kind of wanna move us towards now like the hope aspect or what can we, what can death push us towards to push, what can death push us towards to in terms of hope? And so we're gonna first watch a poem by Alicia Nicole Harris called Death Poem. Um, and then we'll watch another one by Dinesh Smith. And so just let them wash over you, just enjoy. And then we'll do some writing after we watch their videos or their poems. There will come a 
day when the fear of death will be the favorite joke passed amongst corpses. And they're already laughing. My love, please don't be afraid, but there will come a day when field mice play in our empty sockets, when our bones become homes for living creatures other than our egos, and when time jostles our skeletons out of the composition that is me and you, and will write with us love letters that spell, I owe you eternity. If we believe in life after death, then I often wonder why we assume the dead like coffins when people were never meant to live in boxes. So I pray that our children have the good sense to leave us a little wiggle room, leave us exposed like stray dogs in a thunderstorm. And I will hear the breeze, but not know it as the breeze. And I will feel the rain, but not know it as the rain. And I will behold the sky, but not know it as the sky instead. I will hear the breeze and think it is your last return into the hearth of my ear. And I will feel the rain and think it is the pinprick of your kiss. And when the rain is tender, I will know that something has softened you. And when the rain is violent, I will know something has shaken you. And in this newfound understanding without eyes or ears or hands or lips, our bare bones will make love in the dirt, never knowing our nakedness and action. The wind cursing through a calligraphy of weeds. In our disrepair, we have grown gardens of ourselves, sprouts of curious gas shooting from my eye sockets, our knuckles, hard, smooth, skipping stones meant for child's play, and the devilish sun picking its way through your missing teeth, and even one of us can keep from smiling these days, and the days go unnoticed, and the nights go unslept, and we talk with our souls through the holes in our ribs, their organs once sat in action. Okay, where is everyone? Okay. All right, we're gonna just keep keep it moving. We're gonna watch another poem in a similar vein to the one we just watched. So that was Death Poem by Alyssa Nicole Harris. The next, wait, the next poem is um, Alternate Heaven for Black Boys by Dines Smith. Alternate heaven for black boys. Somewhere, a sun. Below, boys brown as rye play the dozens and ball. Jump in the air and stay there. Boys become new moons. Gum dark on all sides. Beg bruised blue water to fly. At least tide, at least spit back a father or two. I won't get started. History is what it is. It knows what it did. Bad dog, bad blood, bad day to be a boy. Color of a July well spent, but here, not heaven, not earth. Boys can't recall their white shirt turned a ruby gown. Here, there is no language for officer or law. No color to call white. If snow fell, it fall black. Please don't call us dead. Call us alive someplace better. We say our own names when we pray. We go out for 
sweets and come back. No need for geography now that we're safe everywhere. Point wherever you please and call it home or church or sweet love. Paradise is a world where everything is a sanctuary and nothing is a gun. Here, if it grows, it knows its place in history. Yesterday, a poplar told me of old forests, heavy with fruit that I'd call uncle. Bursting red poplars, harvest the dark wind chimes, and after I fell, it kissed sap into my wounds. Do you know what it's like to live someplace that loves you back? There, I drowned back before once. There, I was a dead fish, the river's prince. There, men stood by shore and watched me blue. There, I knew how to swim but couldn't. There, I had a face and then I didn't. There, my mother stood over me and cried, open casket. But I wasn't there, I was here by my own water, singing a song I learned somewhere south of somewhere worse. But that was when direction mattered now. Everywhere I am is the center of everything. I must be the Lord of something. What was I before? A boy, a son, a, a warning, a myth. I whistled, now I'm the God of whistling. I built my Olympia downstream and you're not welcome. Trust, the trip will kill you. We earned this paradise by a death we didn't deserve. And I'm sure that there are other here's somewhere for every kind of somebody, a heaven of brown girls braiding on golden stoops. But but somebody prayed we'd rest in peace. And here we are in peace, whole, all summer. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So those were our two spoken word videos. Okay, I'm returning. Uh, how do I do this? Just checking the chat to see if anything's been communicated. Let's see, how do I? Okay. How do I stop, Shane? There you go. Okay, I'm back. Alrighty, so I share these two poems because I think when we talk about death, it is inevitable to talk about the what happens after. And what I think is so beautiful about Alyssa Nicole Harris's poem, which really is a love poem, if you were to like analyze it in one way, is that she, um, she creates this theory, like if we really believe in life after death, Daka, therefore then, what would that look like? Or what would I want? Or what would I need to see to make it worthwhile? Alternatively, Dinesh Smith creates, I mean, if you haven't read um, their book, some uh, Don't Call Us Dead, it's brilliant. Uh, it won a lot of awards. It's a very amazing uh, book. And the premise is that like, there's a heaven, there's a different heaven for black boys who are killed um, by, uh, you know, racism in America and whatever that may look like. And so Dinez creates like an alternative heaven. There's this magical realism. There's this fantastical element. There's this spiritual uh, reach that both Alyssa and Dinez are reaching for. And so our next like free prompt writing thing is like, you close your eyes tonight. Tomorrow you wake up and the after, I'm leaving it very wide open. What is there? What happens? What is it like? Please write down. It doesn't have to be positive, but I'm assuming it will be positive. <laughs> I've asked this question before and I got very surprising responses. So, you know, just you wake up in the after, what does that world look like? Oh, Zoria, do you have your hand up? Or is it just a, a lingering hand?
Okay, everyone, please start to wrap it on up. Wrap your last sentence up. The last thing, the last phase of today, so we'll probably end in like 10 minutes. So then that's that we're within the one hour time or a little bit over the one hour time frame. I'll read one more poem and this is gonna be my poem and it's the seed for this workshop. And then I'll talk about kind of summarize what we've gone through today. And then we'll have one last time to go through what we've written today and either add to something we've written or expand on something new. Does that sound good? I'm gonna say good to myself, yes. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> move on. So I'm gonna read this last poem and it's called Irrational Fear of Home. And this is really the seed for the workshop. I was struggling so much in the past couple of years with, I mean, obviously we all went through a pandemic and just watching the news every day and going through uh, family members dying through seeing, you know, nations really be plagued by um, the literal physical effects of it and the psychological damage from, you know, a multi-year multi pandemic, uh, the Black Lives Matter protests that were and caused by police brutality, uh, natural disaster. There's just so many things. Mass shootings, I'm, I'm American, so just mass shootings in America that were rampant. There was so much going on that I couldn't write. I, I, I'm the type of person who needs to write every day normally, but with so many stressors, so much depth, so much uh, thinking about my temporality, writing poems felt very pointless. I was like, what's the point of writing a poem if you know things aren't guaranteed? And so my only way to like kind of get out of this mindset was to write through it. And so I'll share this poem and then, yeah. Irrational fear of home. There are many ways to be called back home. The nose dive of a plane, the punctuation of a pistol, my bike folded into a red crane gazing up at God. I think I love this world too much. Gifted with wide nostrils, I inhale and tighten like a balloon ready for flight or for bursting. I know what they say, eight glasses of water, eight hours of sleep. I eat less meat, but fail going vegan after a week. Alone, I watch a crane crash into the black churning river. Dusk spreads like a rash. A mosquito ripens on my bicep. In its bulging abdominum, I swirl outside myself, here and not here. What I give, I take back with the smack of my palm. What makes me desirable? My always summer skin? Why do they want my blood? Am I really as sweet as swinging fruit? If you're lucky, you spend most of your life asleep your mind loosened like baby teeth. Kids don't question tooth fairy logic, bone returned, refleshed with a face. I tied my canine to the doorknob, slammed. Crooked tooth gape of the man who slams the brakes on the bus. And today is not the day I return home to my mother as a pension payment. I walk to school shaking like a tambourine on a restless knee. I remember the caved in helmet, the exhaust pipe burning calf to bone, the fence blown into my sternum. My fragility makes me a man. My mother says, don't come home to America because it's safer in Japan. No guns or police who will follow me like history. I can run from a bullet like my father, but what if I can't run from myself? Fear can make a home out of a body. Nowhere on this earth is heaven if there's no peace within me. Who isn't negotiating with death? who isn't searching for a God. I've been saying, I need to get my life right before he comes back since Sunday school. Right now, in a lilied muumuu, my grandmother sits where she sat for 30 years, one hand rubbing a knee, another clutching her landline, humming why need a buy him, waiting for heaven to pick up. She knows something I don't. A sickle of moonlight invades my room, can't close my eyes until I pray. One day, a third of the sun will darken. The moon will turn to blood. The stars shot from the sky. I'll be given a white stone with my new name. I'll have no memory of my old home. I'll be unkillable forever. Amen. For me, this poem really made me come confront my faith. Um, 
you know, I grew up Christian, but it wasn't until writing through this that I realized if I actually believe there is something that happens after this heaven, then it change it would change the way I live my current reality. And so for, for everyone here, I know everyone has a different faith background or is irreligious or whatever. So the prompt though is if you if you were immortal, if you had no fear of death, how would you live your life? differently. And that's our last prompt for today. And so we'll write towards that. I'll type it out because it's, it's not in the slides. Um, where is the Zoom call? Stop share. Okay. I'm going to write that in the chat. If you were immortal, How would you change your day today? Oppositely, if you want to reverse the question, if you had one day to live, how would you spend your last day? So basically the same question.
two more minutes. And if you're already done, maybe just look over what you've written over the span of this past hour. I would love to hear at least one person share. We need to bring this to a close. Uh, you're interfering with the dinner hour. Say that again. I was uh, I was not listening. Okay, I say we need to bring this to a close. We're interfering with dinner hour. Okay, did you just enter the room, or were you? Yeah. Okay, so we're we're closing soon. They have like a minute left. Okay. All right, please start to finish your last sentence or idea or whatever. I use the word whatever too much. Please finish your last thought, your last beautiful words. Okay. And that's our timer. Well, it seems like we don't have enough time for sharing time. I mean, I'll still be on Zoom if anyone in the Zoom room wants to stick around. But for the live people, it seems like this will be the end. Just want to thank you so much for going through this journey. Like, it's really hard to read the room. So I, it's, I, I really, you all look like little dots on my screen. So I can't read the atmosphere. But I hope this was fruitful in some way. If, if the poems we read together or what you wrote can lead to something. On this screen, you'll see other prompts. Um, these are some of the other options I, had, I was considering using for today. Uh, what else? I have a Google Doc with a many more. I, again, I thought this was going to be two hours. So I had two hours worth of other poems to go through. So if you want that list and packet, I can email it to you. I guess just maybe before you leave the room, just type your email into the Zoom chat and I'll make an email listserv and send those out to everyone. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I hope this is good. And yeah, goodbye. <laughs>
fear of too many plans, fear of broken plans, fear of bungled plans, fear that I won't see the reason for the change in so-called plans. Mm, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, the future can be super anxiety inducing. So I, I resonate with that. I'm, you know, I'm one of these people who I, I like to make plans and have things. And I've just a couple last past, last past couple of days, there were a few things that the, the plan would just not come into, into the picture. It kept changing. And were, I got really frustrated and uh, stressed out because of, I think, but like I say, the, the last line was, and fear that I won't see the reason for the change in so-called plans. So mm -hmm. let's try to see the, that change. So anyway, that was one. I, will, I can read one more while I got my mic on. Okay. How would you spend your last day? Uh, quote, uh, answer, sitting or lying quietly in nature, tuning and giving thanks. Ooh, beautiful. I think I would do something similar. That's, I mean, it's something I do every day, so I might as well go out doing the same. I mean, I don't, it's something I try to do every day for 10 minutes or 30, 20 minutes or 30 minutes in the morning. So why not do it on the way out? That would be the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's that. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for sharing. My pleasure. Uh, someone's. Yes, um, yeah. Oh, I have one. Yes. Please, please. So, um, I just said, um, self no more, a part of the universe. Um, hmm, floating, wondering, what's next? Uh, oh, you finished. Oh, okay. <laughs> give, us, give us a little haiku. Nice. <laughs> that was great. Wait, could you send that in the chat? That was like a yeah. As well. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> what's next? You wonder because a lot of times you know people think. They think, is there life after death? So it's like, I feel like we're floating in the universe, but we're not, we're, we're self no more. So where do we go? We're just in the universe. What's mm -hmm. next? We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think you would really like Shintaro's Tanikawa's books if you haven't. I was just reading through some of them and like, he writes so much about death and like this idea of just becoming like nothingness uh, or but like something bigger than what he, you were as a human. So, and Ruthie, really, you live in Japan? Yeah. Okay, let's connect. <laughs> yeah, let's connect. <laughs> uh, someone sent in the chat uh, something they wrote, but they want to share it privately. So I'm going to read it on behalf of them. It's called Goodbye to My Body. Thank mm -hmm. you for the warmth. You didn't like dancing, but danced in your own way. Belly shaking with laughter, arms above the head, stretching out, celebrating a good sleep and a good morning. Thank you for helping with the adventure. You couldn't see perfectly. You couldn't eat everything. You couldn't feel everything. And you missed the door frames often, but you helped me read magic, taste the world and be a multitude. Wow, I got shivers. That's beautiful. I really like that prompt. I may keep writing it. I'm just reading through the other comments. Everyone who sent me your email, I'll send the, yeah, I'll send the documents and everything out in the next, like, a couple of days or today or soon. If I find myself immortal, I will immediately look for a way to die. I refuse to live in a world with no permission, no denial, no rejection, no reproach. I see. There's this book. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard of it. It's called the Al not not the famous alchemist. It's another alchemist series by Michael Scott, and it's like this fantasy series where like all of the canonical people throughout history like live forever, like William Shakespeare or Joan of Arc. And it's like it's so interesting because like some of the people they live forever. They they've been living a long time, so they know like forty something languages. And it's so interesting how like they forget certain words. It is it's a really great series, but. You, Patrick, you saying that made me think of that that book series, The Alchemist series by Michael Scott. Okay, I guess that's the end of the workshop. I just want to release folks, I guess. So that's the end. Thank you so much. I'll send out emails shortly. 
And uh, how was the rest of the conference, by the way? I didn't get to see. Did anyone go to other like workshops or? or... There was only the morning workshop um, because the speaker canceled. Oh. So we, we've only had the, I think the nine to 10 and then uh, yours now, or the one right before you. Oh, so it's a pretty free day. For today at least. I see, I see. Yeah, there was a um, poetry workshop, but you had to pre-register in advance. Oh, that one. So it was like a very small elected group, okay. but it was really great because we were able to, we were supposed to submit our two poems um, in advance. And then each of us, we read our one poem. I write haiku. So we, <laughs> we submitted our writings and then we were able to get critique. And so it was really, it was really wonderful by um, David. David is in Australia. Um, he wasn't able to come up to Japan this time, but it was really great. It was like two hours. So it was really great. Yeah. I may do that next year. That sounds great. I love workshops. Like those really slow. Yeah, ones. I think he does it. This is my first time. But I think he, most of the people on there, they've done it like three or four years. So you must do it like every year. Yeah, yeah. it was great. Yeah. And you write haiku. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> haiku Ruthie. <laughs> Ruth, are you on social media? Can I add you somewhere? Um, yeah, I guess I'm on Facebook or what am I? What's that? Facebook, yeah. Okay, I'll find you on Facebook. Yeah. I, I put my contact uh, uh, homepage in my websites and the email in the chat if anybody's interested. Oh, okay. well, that's great. Thank I'm you. also on I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, but I Facebook probably gets the most. Uh, uh, attention. And we're already Facebook. I didn't really need attention, but uh, <laughs> we're already Facebook friends, right, Edward? On Facebook, I know. Instagram. I think so. I know we're all connected somewhere. Yeah, I feel like yeah. Yeah, did I put my stuff in there? I'm trying to think. I publish a poem occasionally on Facebook, not not very often, but uh, on my blog as well. So, okay, it was really nice to see you all. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I'm going to bow out. Okay. Okay. Bye. bye. It's great to see bye. you.